Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Mrs. Wolf. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Con, I'm really glad to see you. I hope the world is treating you well. Yes, she is. Good morning. Good morning. It is so wonderful to see each of you here today. What a blessing it is to gather safely, masked up, and socially distanced <laughs> in our sanctuary. Amen. And welcome to our friends who are joining us online through Facebook. I encourage you, if you're joining us online on Facebook, to take a moment and just let us know where you're at where you're joining us from. How are you doing today? Are you, do you have any prayer concerns? And when you do that, it lets us know that our congregation is actually bigger than what we have here in the sanctuary because we can only have a certain amount. We know that we're spread out. We're not just in Washington State. We're all over the country. And God bless this congregation as it's spread out all over um, so let us know where you're at, and then while you're at it, share. Hit that share button, and that way you're inviting others to church. This is evangelism in the 21st century. And I also encourage those of you that are in the sanctuary later on, go on YouTube and Facebook and share the link. Let others know about your church, about this wonderful congregation in the Tri-Cities. The only way people are going to know about us is if you tell them, right? Thank you. A few prayer concerns before we start our worship service. We rejoice that Joyce Jakes is home from the hospital. She had a little surgery and she's home recuperating. So prayers of thanksgiving for that. And of course, you're Welcome to send cards and, um, and well wishes and call her. We're also wonderfully thrilled to see Connie 
and Donna Eckert here in the congregation sitting with Shirley. So welcome. We love to see you even behind your mask. I know you're smiling. <laughs> welcome. A few other announcements. Uh, Lent is coming soon, so we will prepare for that. Ash Wednesday service will be held a brief service here at noon. If you're wanting to come physically, it will also be on Facebook. So it'll be a brief service of prayers and silence, scripture and music. So you're welcome to come here physically at noon if you're able. And then we start our Bible study, our Lent Bible study that evening. So make sure you get all that. It's in your bulletin and it's in your newsletter. If you have prayer concerns, please call the church office. Let us know. Let us know what's going on. We, we want to know what's going on in your life. Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let, Let us, us rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. it. Let us worship the Lord. Please join me in the call to worship. It's based on Psalm 147. How good it is to come together to sing praises to God. How right and appropriate it is to sing our praises to God. Through the works of God's hands, God's generous ways are seen every day at work amongst people and situations. God delights in receiving the praises of God's own people. Praise to the Lord. How great is the Lord our God, whose understanding and powers are beyond our comprehension. We sing our praises to the Lord God for God's unfailing love. We offer God our worship in reverent awe and in deep humility. Amen. forget you. 
You remove the burden of our sins. You cover us with your grace. Awesome and majestic, compassionate and tender are you, O gracious God. Hear our prayers now, O God. We pray for the sick, the sorrowing, those who mourn. We pray for peace and an end to war. We pray for the victims of abuse and domestic violence. We pray for children neglected and hungry. We pray for our nation, that we may see the need that so many communities are experiencing. And may this country's vast resources be distributed in fairness and for the common good. We pray for your church, O oh God, that a spirit of love and truth prevail in all faith communities. We pray for this congregation for Northwest, that we may be your servants to the people you place in our midst. May we be empowered by your strength, O oh God, to serve others in your name. Hear now the quiet prayers of our hearts. Gracious God, bless us now as we continue in our worship and hear these prayers that we have offered in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever. Amen. The scripture reading for today comes from Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 21 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these, he who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name. Because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Have you not heard? Have you not seen? Have you not been told from the beginning? These are the big questions 
is asked in today's text in Isaiah chapter 40. Now when you hear questions like that, and especially the tone I read them in, it kind of sounds like a lecture is coming at you, right? <laughs> Someone is going to set you straight, and that's exactly what Isaiah is going to do. Well, maybe not so much a lecture as a retrieval of memory to help the people understand their situation. So let's take a brief look at the historical context to understand what is happening in that text. The prophet Isaiah is speaking to citizens of Jerusalem who have been captured by the Babylonian king and now have been living in exile for decades. Israel is devastated, Jerusalem is in ruins, and people have forgotten who they are. In the first 39 chapters of the book that we know as Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah is offering an outcry of lament and agony and harsh words of judgment. Those are the first 39 chapters of Isaiah that scholars call First Isaiah. The book of Isaiah is actually a compilation of different sources. We know it as Isaiah, but it's actually written by several sources. So in those first 39 chapters, there's lament and agony and a lot of judgment. But now we come to chapter 40, and it begins with these famous words, comfort, Oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Now you may recall those words from Handel's Messiah. The prophet is now offering words of comfort and words of hope to an exiled community that has lost all hope and certainly needs some comforting. The prophet Isaiah is also reminding the people that God has been with them all along in exile and will continue to be with them as they return from exile and rebuild their communities. So this is a teaching moment, not a lecture, but a teaching moment, a retrieval of memory. And it's up to Isaiah to make the case for God to these exiles, to, to the people who believe that they've been abandoned by God. Isaiah has to make the case that God has not abandoned them. How can people maintain hope in such a difficult and painful situation? And this is the question that Isaiah is responding to in these verses. And I am sure Sure, I am certain that many of us have asked this same question at some point in our lives, and especially this past year with so many challenges. How can we maintain hope in such a difficult and painful situation? How can we wait for God to renew our strength? Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not very good at waiting. I am not. I have to fill up my time. I have to do something. I can't just sit there and be. I can't just sit there and wait. I don't think I'm the only one that has trouble waiting. Many years ago, Timex, I don't know if you remember that watch company, asked people how long they would wait before taking action in a variety of situations. And their researchers discovered that people aren't really very good at waiting. One discovery was that most people would wait about 13 seconds before honking at the car in front of them when the light turns green. I don't know, that sounds like a long time. In D.C., where I've been living for the past, where I've lived for 14 years, it's more like five seconds. The minute that light turns green, I don't care if you're five cars behind, you're honking. <laughs> Another recent study has found that people will only wait three seconds for a web page to upload when they are shopping online. And this is down from a wait time of five seconds in 2008. So no, we are not very good at waiting as a species, but here we are waiting. We've been waiting for a while now. 
We've been waiting for this virus to disappear. We've been waiting for businesses to reopen. We've been waiting to go eat at our favorite restaurant inside. We've been waiting to come back and worship together once more. We've been waiting in line for a vaccine. <laughs> How can we continue to wait and hope and trust in God during difficult times? And where is God in our waiting time? That word wait is very important in this context. The Hebrew word kavod, which is translated as wait in Isaiah 40, verse 31, literally means to bind together like a cord, or, or the twisting and winding of a strand or cord to make rope. So picture in your mind that process of making a rope. Maybe some of you know how to make ropes. Picture that twisting and that binding those thin threads together to form this really strong rope. The more strands that are twisted or woven together in a rope, the greater is its strength. In this text, Isaiah is using that metaphor of making a rope to help the people understand that what is happening to them as they wait, they are becoming like that strong rope, coming together strand by strand, being twisted into one strong cord. They are being transformed. They are being transformed as those strands are. They are being transformed into God's people once more. So there is...